Would restoring the gold standard bring a return of King Dollar? Well, take a listen to what Congressman Ron Paul told me right here in the Cutler Report earlier this week. Bernanke says people don't want to buy gold, they want to buy a steady basket. If the dollar were tied to gold, wouldn't the consumer price basket be steadier? Absolutely. I mean, uh, when they have unlimited uh, ability to print money when they need it, uh, it always has to go down in value. All right. Tonight, gold as currency could be making a comeback. Just this afternoon, the Utah House took the first step, passing a bill to recognize gold and silver. There it is, silver, as legal tender. This is something we have not seen in the USA in nearly 80 years. Utah may be just the first of 13 states moving forward with similar legislation. Joining us now, live from Salt Lake City, is the bill's sponsor, Utah Republican State Representative Brad Galvez. Brad, thank you. Tell me about this. What's going to happen? Utah going back on the gold standard. Well, it's great to be with you tonight. Um, yes, uh, this bill we, uh, basically outlines the gold and silver coin issued by the federal government are considered legal tender in the state of Utah. Um, I believe that this is the first step in preparing ourselves here in Utah for uh, what may be coming down the road. As we look, as we just mentioned, the economy, the dollar are on the decline. And, and I believe that by having gold and silver coin as legal tender, this will be one of the steps that will allow Utah to uh, kind of stay strong and to be able to keep from that falling dollar. Um, well, we heard recently, uh, Forbes said that Utah is one of the best managers of the managed states in the union. And I believe that this bill will enable us to continue that trend for a number of years. All right, so Utah wants to have its own monetary policy, which I think is pretty cool. I mean, it's probably a very constitutional thing to do. Here's my question, Brad. You're going to restore the dollar, uh, silver dollar and gold as legal tender, all right? You're not going to allow capital gains tax because the stuff will probably appreciate in value, so that's good. Let me ask you this. Is this spreading among the other western states? Let's talk with the western states. Is this new gold monetary policy spreading? You know what, I believe that it is. Um, Colorado actually since about 1893 has had this same language and code. In other words, Colorado back in 1893 put in their code that, that gold and silver coin is legal tender in their state. Um, I know last year Idaho uh, looked at, uh, ran a bill as well, it went through the House, uh, did not make it through the Senate. Um, uh, there are other states in the surrounding area. There's actually states back east as well that have, have been looking at this. Montana's looking at it. So I do believe that it's not only in the west, but I think, it's, I think you're seeing it throughout the, the nation. Well, just quickly, can you get this through your state senate? Would the governor sign it? Because if that happened, you would force, I think, this to happen all over the country. They would have to. Otherwise, all the money would go to Utah. Well, we're sure optimistic about it, and that would be the plan. As like says, we, we feel like this really will be a, a great boon for Utah if we can get it through. Um, we're optimistic about our prospects. I know we've talked to a number of senators, and there's a number of senators that are on board. And uh, I, I feel like there's a good chance that this will move forward. I mean, actually, good money will drive out bad money. It's the reverse of Gresham's Law. People will just flock to Utah, where you can have this uh, gold and silver coins. I'll put my silver coin back up on the screen as legal tender. Uh, now, Brad, are you getting complaints? from the local citizenry, from the local folks, from the business people, that they're sick and tired of owning dollars whose value keeps going down. Is that the genesis of this? Is this a grassroots revolt? I, 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 you know, we haven't heard a lot from uh, necessarily from a lot of the businesses and people, but yes, I think it's a grassroots thing. Uh, there have been a lot of people that are concerned about what's happening with the economy and concerned about the decline of the dollar, and so they're saying we need a way to be able to to plan for the future and be prepared and, and provide some stability, some security for the future. So I think this is, yes, it's definitely a grassroots movement, and I think it will continue to roll forth, not in, only in Utah, but throughout the nation. Gold prices climbing today as investors buy into the precious metal in order to seek protection from fiscal problems in Europe and perhaps even in the United States. Here for a CEO sit-down is Bob McEwen. He's the chief executive of Minera Andes and U.S. Gold. Good to have you with us on Bloomberg. Tell us a little bit more about your predictions for gold, Robert. Do you think that gold is going to be worth $5,000 an ounce? Absolutely, in three to four years. And silver at 200. What is going to drive the price of gold to such heights? More people will think they need it in their portfolio, and there's a real shortage of it. Uh, we're in one of these rare cycles that so far has happened three times in the last 110 years. 
Um, and it's just the uncertainty in the economy, uncertainty in the geopolitical sphere. People are just nervous and they want a place to put their money in case something really bad happens. But Robert, haven't we always had uncertainty? I mean, there's never any free lunch in the marketplace. There's no sure investment. What makes you think that gold is going to more than double from its current level? Why 5,000? Why not say 10,000? Why that particular number? Oh, I like 5,000, but no, if you, if you looked at the last cycle, gold went from 1970 through 80 from $40 an ounce to a little over $800 an ounce, a 20-fold increase. And that was the first time gold was freed from government control. I think you'll see a similar occurrence and our low this time was achieved in 2001 and that was $250 an ounce. So you're up to 5,000 if you wanted to. Another way of looking at it, you inflation adjust that $800 number in 1980 and you're up over $2,000. And there's just, gold is underrepresented in portfolios right now. It hasn't been an asset that people have held. Well, you say it's underrepresented because people haven't held it. Perhaps it's because they don't think that buying a particular metal that only has use as jewelry or maybe a store of value, as some would argue, uh, isn't necessarily where they're going to grow their money. Why is gold considered to be such a long-term store of value? Well, I think we have to look at Fort Knox, and it's full of gold. And we look at the French Bundesbank, or the German Bundesbank, and the French Central Bank. They're the largest holders of gold in the world right now as part of their foreign reserves. Yeah, but they I mean, the UK, for example, the Bank of England, they don't have any gold. So, I mean, there's always someone who says they don't need it, while others say they do. Bank of England was a brilliant trader. They sold their last ounce of gold at $252 an ounce. Well, having said now that, I, mean, have... why, I guess my point is, why is gold considered to be such a store of value? It's only because there's an agreement that between two people or two organizations that it has value. It doesn't have any intrinsic value. That's true. But right now, the world is saying they're willing to pay better than $1,500 an ounce for gold. And it's in short supply relative to the amount of money that's being pushed into the system. All right, well, it's, tell us about um, the supply of gold right now. Where is it coming from? Places such as Canada, the United States, or more faraway places such as uh, China? They're the biggest gold producer. China has become the biggest gold producer. Nevada is a very large producer of gold. South Africa, Canada, it, it's coming from many countries around the world. Uh, but it isn't increasing. It increases annually at about a pace of 1% of the total gold stocks. So it doesn't expand anywhere near the rate of the monetary expansion happening in the Western world today. And it's basically saying the West is trying to, governments of the West are trying to resolve our economic problems and political uncertainty by printing more money, money that they don't have, and creating enormous levels of debt, and that's making people anxious. The New York Stock Exchange with Heis Gronewegen, who is the uh, manager at Silver Arrow Capital Management. Let's, let's talk about founder founder, president, CEO, you're, you're the chairman, exactly. you're everything there. Listen, let's talk about uh, gold, because that's what you focus on, silver and gold, mm. precious metals hedge fund. Uh, we're looking at 1531 a troy ounce right now, mm. and I would have thought with all of the inflation, not only concerns, but actually, uh, you know, evidence that we're seeing around the world, you'd see gold to go higher. Why not? Well, because there's an inverse correlation, of course, with the U.S. dollar, and the U.S. dollar today made a big jump yeah, vis-a-vis -vis the euro, and that's also why you see that Gold hasn't made so much a headway as it normally would have under the circumstances. And people also choose the dollar as a safe haven in a way. When the market sells off, you see that the dollar gets stronger and that, uh, you know, other asset classes sell off. Uh, but you're absolutely right. In, um, you know, gold is an inflation hedge. And the Fed doesn't have any room to increase interest rates. So that would be the logical way to invest, you know, because uh, it's behind the curve, the Fed. And then uh, you would have to hedge yourselves by buying gold. What do you expect from the Fed? Because as a, a precious metal hedge fund manager, you've got to be so sensitive to moves coming out of the Federal Reserve Bank. Well, that's the one million uh, dollar question, I think. Uh, you know, what's going to happen, uh, you know, after QE2? Uh, if the Fed doesn't do anything, I think that you will see that the economy will, will fall further. I mean, we already see the first indications of that. I don't think the economy is sustainable. I've never thought that. 
And if they come out with, a, say, QE3, you will probably see that the dollar will decline further because, you know, all the paper that's being printed and uh, it, it doesn't sort any Is effect in the economy. Is that a possibility, QE3? Um, I, I think they have, they have very little choice, to be honest. And, um, you know, they, but the, the biggest beneficiary from the QE1 and QE2 has been the stock market. And I don't think so much, uh, you know, say, let's say the middle class. I think that the middle class actually is being wiped out as a result of, uh, you know, the continuous lower housing prices. We are even at a, at a bigger decline than in the Great Depression. You know, but that, like I said to you, that's the one million dollar question. Uh, I mean, what is going to happen after QE2? Uh, but I don't see any easy way out. I mean, look, for example, at Greece at the moment. Yeah? I mean, I think uh, this is only the beginning. You know, they won't come out of it. It's, it's impossible. And we will get, get contagion, uh, you know, effects in uh, Portugal for Portugal and Ireland and ultimately Spain and then ultimately for the whole European, uh, you know, union. I got to quickly ask you about silver versus gold because yeah. you've been a bigger fan of the smaller precious metal, mm -hmm. shall we call it. What do you think now? Well, I still think that, um, you know, I looked at uh, how silver performed, you know, we know that silver went up to $50 an ounce. And, um, you know, we know that all the commodities are denominated in U.S. dollars, so there's an inverse correlation. But you have to look, actually, if those commodities also outperform in other currencies. And then what you see is that gold didn't outperform in the euro, where silver did. Silver did actually much, much better, and granted, it's a much... legendary investor, Jim Rogers, chairman and CEO of Rogers Holdings in town from Singapore. Great to see you, Jim. I'm delighted to be here. Um, let's talk more about commodities because you said silver prices in the near term are coming down even further. Well, they have come down, yes. You're, you're right about that. I don't know if they'll go down more from here. Uh, it would be good if they did because then I could buy more cheap. I want to buy more silver. I'm not selling my silver. And if silver comes down because demand slows, you see what's happening in the stock markets around the world. So if you see that happen and that causes commodities or silver to, to correct some more, pick up the phone and buy some more silver. What about gold? Same thing. Pick up the phone and buy some more gold. Uh, I, I hope they come down. You know, gold could go down two or three hundred dollars and still be in a bull market. That's not a prediction. I'm just saying it would be a normal correction for silver and for gold and for all commodities, and it would be good for the world. What's been untouched in the world? What do you like longer term? Long term? Well, I, again, commodities. If the world economy gets better, commodities are going to do well. If it doesn't get better, Maria, they're going to print more money. It's the wrong thing to do, but that's all they know to do in Washington and Tokyo and a few places. They'll print more money. And if they print money, you should own silver and rice and, and real assets. What's your take on Bernanke? What do you think happens at the end of QE2? Since the first day I, Mr. Bernanke went to Washington, I told you he was going to be a disaster. He's never been right about anything in the seven or eight years he's been down there. I hope he doesn't come back with QE3, but that's all he knows. The only thing he knows to do is to print money. He doesn't understand finance. He doesn't understand currencies. He doesn't understand economics. He understands printing money, and he's going to print more money whether we like it or not. It's the wrong thing to do, but that's what he'll do. So market disruption come the end of June because QE2 goes away? QE2 is definitely going to go away. Now, it may come back in a, with a different name. They may call it cupcakes. Who knows what they'll call it when it comes back. But they're going to bring it back because he'll be terrified and Washington will be terrified. There's an election coming in November of 2012. Washington's going to print more money.